Hello everyone, uh, is my voice clear and okay for you? Good, good, good. My name's Arjuna and a lot of you know me. And it's lovely to see you all. I'm going to give today a presentation on the wisdom of Paramahansa Yogananda. What I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly introduce what and why. And I'm going to read ideas in a contemplative space. And I invite you to just to sit quietly with them. Some of them may contradict what you believe in, so it's an opportunity to sit with that, to allow them to work on you. In reading Yogananda, he often speaks of God. Seek God. From my memory, he talks of life as a gift. We have this gift of life. But he says, seek beyond that. Seek the giver. Seek God. God that's given us this. All that we have, all that we are. And he says that God has everything except one thing. And that's our love. God has created us and God just waits for us to be tired of all the distractions and then seek him, him, her, whatever you want to call it. Seek the giver. Yeah. So that's a main theme in his teachings that I've, I've taken from it. So... As it says in the Bible, seek ye first the kingdom and all else shall be added unto you. It doesn't mean you have to give away the gift of life, but it will be richer if you open up more to what's behind it. And I've titled the lecture uh, presentation The Wisdom of a Sage and I think it would be far more accurate to title it The Wisdom of a World Teacher. I find his, his wisdom profound. Yeah. There are three sections to this presentation. The human condition, the environment we live and work in, inner work, what we can do about it, and concluding thoughts. Nice and simple. Okay, and I have a disclaimer as well. It might be obvious, but it, it occurs to me this presentation is necessarily limited. It's a personal selection of his teachings. They're teachings that affect me, that I like, that I think you might as well. It's a selection of only the tiny amount of his teachings. So don't judge him on just what I share, but anyway. I'm presenting them because they inspire me, they challenge me, and they help me make sense of life, which I've needed. And it is my hope that these teachings I share today in no way distort his teachings, my choice and my arrangement of the teachings. And as is the path, it is for each of us to discriminate as to what is right for you, what is true for you. Okay. So any silences today will be deliberate. The human condition. There are many reasons for suffering. One reason is to prevent man from learning too much of others and not enough of himself. Pain eventually compels human beings to wonder is a cause-effect principle operating in my life? Are my troubles due to my wrong thinking? God answers man only through law. Hit a stone with your knuckles 
drink sulfuric acid and you must bear the consequences. Break his laws of life and suffering will come. Think rightly, behave nobly, and peace will come. Love God unconditionally, and he will come. This is an image of when Yogananda first went to America offering talks, which were very popular. God sent you here for a purpose. Are you acting in harmony with that purpose? Do not allow the narrow ego to obstruct your attainment of an infinite goal. Mental states. Waves whipped up in the middle of the ocean by a storm rise high, recede into a hollow and then rise again, one after the other, until the storm ceases and the waves dissolve back into the sea. Likewise with the mind, the mental peaks are life's alternating joys and sorrows. The hollows in between are indifference or boredom. In this world of competing dualities, the ordinary being is tossed up and down, rising on a wave of joy, sinking into the trough of indifference, and then getting tumbled by a wave of sorrow. They little know anything beyond these states of consciousness. What man needs in order to live a successful and satisfying life is evenness of mind. Moods are your greatest enemy. Don't indulge in them, for they are a formidable stumbling block in the path of your progress. With the relentless might of watchfulness, guard yourself against moods. Most of the world is like a mental hospital. Some people are sick with jealousy, Others with anger, hatred, passion. They are victims of their habits and emotions. But you can make your home a place of peace. Learn to be calm and you will always be happy. Desires. The karmic law requires that every human wish find ultimate fulfilment. Every human wish find ultimate fulfilment. Non-spiritual desires are thus the chain that binds man to the reincarnational wheel. Desires beget desires. And satisfaction will never come if you go on multiplying your wants. The divine physician is keeping you in the hospital of earthly delusion until your disease of desire for material things is cured. (laughs) Then he will let you go home. Success lies in learning the art of inner contentment. Acquire what you need and then be satisfied with what you have. It is not wrong to tell the Lord what, that we want something, but it shows greater faith if we simply say, Heavenly Father, 
I know that thou dost anticipate my every need. Sustain me according to thy will. To be liberated, engaged in serviceful, joyful, non-attached activity. All fulfilments you are seeking and much more are awaiting you in God. And I forgot to say these quotes come from 15 books, 20 lectures, they're from over a big period of time. Suffering, back to suffering. By ignoble whips of pain, man is driven at last into the infinite presence whose beauty alone should lure him. You are an immortal child of God and all the difficulties that visit you are meant only to stimulate you to higher achievements. God sends to you those experiences you need that you might profit by them. If you run away from those lessons, you'll still have to learn them sometime somewhere else. Suffering is a good teacher to those who are quick and willing to learn from it, but it becomes a tyrant to those who resist and resent. Your own problems are the most important ones for you to solve. For if you better your own life, you will have helped to resolve the enigma of this existence for others. Example speaks louder than words. Remember, a saint is a sinner who never gave up. Life and death. Everything here is nothing more than God's motion picture. We are the players. We must play our parts well but we must not identify ourselves too intensely with the drama. Life and death are but a passing from dream to dream. They are only thoughts. You are dreaming you are alive and you are dreaming you are dead. When you get into the great Christ consciousness, you see that life and death are dreams of God. Those who fear it allow death to be victorious over them. But those who face themselves and try every day to change for the better will face death with courage and win the true victory. Realise that you are visiting the earth only temporarily. You are here solely to learn necessary lessons and to help all who cross your path. Sooner or later, each one of us will be taken away from this earth. Find out now what life is all about. To be alive is to be on fire with purpose. To move forward with undaunted determination toward a goal. You must be enthusiastically active. Make something of yourself and give something worthwhile to the world. Do something in this world. Do something wonderful. Whatever you do, 
will be recognised by God. And even if the world fails to recognise you, if you have done everything you can, that infused mental power will remain with your soul. Wherever you go, in this life and beyond, you will have with you that invincible spirit. The state of the world. The true enemy of man is ignorance. The root cause of the world's troubles is selfishness born of ignorance. There is no perfection in this world. Why seek it here? You may find a little short-lived pleasure but mostly you'll find suffering and injustice. Seek until you find him. For until you do, you shall never be able to solve the riddle of life, nor be free from the miseries that are part of mortal existence. Two, in a work, what we can do about it. If you contact and commune with God in the inner temple of silence, you will have mastered the true art of living. If you contact and commune with God in the inner temple of silence, you will have mastered the true art of living. Reincarnation. Reincarnation is not compulsory unless you make it so. Pay attention to the studies life places before you. They contain the lessons you must learn. Focus. Life has a bright side and a dark side. For the world of relativity is composed of light and shadows. If you permit your thoughts to dwell on evil, you yourself become ugly. Look only for the good in everything that you absorb the quality of beauty. Love yourself. Getting along with self is the most important point in getting along in this world. Love yourself because you are a child of God with divine potentials. It is your love and concern for this potential self that inspires and inspirits the unfoldment of your true soul nature. Love yourself. Faith. Have faith that he knows what you need. You will see that you get much better things when he chooses for you. Say, please tell me thy will. Even when you are in the coal bin of suffering, you don't wonder why the mother has placed you there. You have faith that she knows best. If you think of God in deepest meditation, if you love him with all your heart, 
and feel completely at peace in his presence without wishing for anything else, the divine magnetism of God will attract unto you everything you have ever dreamed about and much more. Choice. God gave us freedom to use our own will. It is we who make of life what it is. If you are happy, it creates a positive vibratory attitude that can attract everything you seek. In ordinary consciousness, we think we are mortal human beings. But when we disengage ourselves from the ego, we see we are spirit. Turn toward God and you will find yourself shaking off the chains of habits and environment. Though the drama of life is governed by a cosmic plan, man may change his part by changing his centre of consciousness. The self identified with the ego is bound. The self identified with the soul is free. Renunciation. Renunciation means put God first. Whether one follows the path of the world or the path of monasticism. Put God first. Persons who work for a living without any wish for the fruits of action, desiring the Lord alone, are true renunciants. It is, it is very difficult to practice such renunciation, but when you so love God that everything you do is to please Him, you are free. Renunciation isn't the giving up of anything except misery. <laughs> love. Love, 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 love. There is nothing greater than love. For it is a quality of God himself within our being. Love itself will keep hiding from you and disappointing you until you have quested long enough to find its abode in the one. To find its abode in the one who resides in the deepest recesses of your own soul and in the heart of everything. You will know what divine love is when you begin to feel your oneness with every human being, not before. In mutual service, we forget the little self and glimpse the measureless self, the spirit that unifies all men. Give peace to all whom none other gave. Claim him your own 
who's everywhere disclaimed. Love all with love that none have felt and brave the battle of life with strength unchained. Concluding thoughts. God's cosmic dream. Every saint who has penetrated to the core of reality has testified that a, a divine universal plan exists and that it is beautiful and full of joy. Beautiful and full of joy. It must be remembered that God is dreaming it all. That this cosmic creation is nothing more than a dream condensation of God's thoughts. Do not take your earth experiences too seriously. The root cause of sorrow is in viewing the passing show with emotional involvement. The factory behind creation is beyond imagination. The whole universe is a single thought in the mind of God. So simple, yet the galaxies are guided by mathematics inconceivable by man. Everything runs in perfect order. What tremendous intelligence is manifested in creation. The infinite is working in everything. All the different eddies of motion called life are controlled by that cosmic intelligence. God is the fire that animates all beings. You think you are doing everything. You forget that it is God who is working through you. It is God who loves through you. It is his love alone that expresses through all forms of love on earth. The sun and moon and earth and all things are held together by the love of God. If we want to know God, we must not isolate our love, but join it to divine love. In spite of the sorrowful dance of life and death, we know that God is love. Therefore, the only purpose of life should be to find God. Awake in God, true saints effect changes in this dream world by means of a will harmoniously attuned to the creative cosmic dreamer. Live quietly in the moment and see the beauty of all before you. The future will take care of itself.
from joy I came. For joy I live. In sacred joy I melt.